Welcome to the Loadout Room. Today we're going to be talking about how to design an individual first aid kit, or what we refer to as an IFAC. Before we get started, a little disclaimer. I'm a cop. I have about as much medical training as a police officer can get, and I do teach other police officers how to respond to a combat casualty here. medical training as a police officer can get and I do teach other police officers the basic of combat casualty care but I am NOT a trauma medic um, I'm not a paramedic I'm very far from a doctor so the model I'm using the kit I'm using is from gray man training I got linked up with gray man training through a mutual friend of mine and he sent me this IFAC to see what I thought Shay Stewart the owner of gray man training has a very long resume that qualifies him to be able to design such a kit. If you guys want to check it out, you can look at some of his bio in the write-up of this review. Um, you can also go to graymantraining.com, look at his bio. He also offers training um, if you want to get into some training. And you can shoot him an email to get one of these kits or drop him a DM on his Instagram page. Uh, you guys can work out him shipping you one of these kits if you really like it. The reason I like this kit so much, and I'm using it as my model, because it has everything that's necessary to have in an IFAC and nothing more. So again, I'm reviewing this from the perspective of a police officer, so I don't need things in here that I'm not qualified to use. Everything that's in here, a police officer or a citizen can use with very minimal training. So it takes repetition, but not extensive training to know how to do these things which is why I love it so much. So we'll get into the kit a little bit. He designed it to be very low profile so that it could fit easily into a purse or a backpack. Um, it's got laser cut molly on the back so you could throw it on your duty belt or on a backpack with molly on it, of course. The low profile helps because we're probably gonna end up having to throw it in our lower back. We wanna keep it center line in our body so we can reach both hands. And that's not possible to do if we think about sticking it up front. So the low profile helps because I'm going to be driving around in a car with it on my lower back the whole time and having something big and fat would be very uncomfortable. So that's another good feature of it. Everything inside can be retrieved by Phil. So I actually don't have to remove it, although there's ways to remove it. I wouldn't have to remove it to get what I need out of it. So. Everything in here I can just fill and, and remove by the way it's set up. It's also set up in the priority of lethality. So what I would want to treat first, the medical adjunct that would be used for that is what, what I would reach first. So that's really cool. Uh, we'll get into it so you guys can kind of understand exactly what I'm talking about. So from a first responder perspective, uh, what we teach police officers, the two main things we want to treat is going to be stopping the bleeding and then clearing the airway. Those are the two main things we're focused on. Later, we focus on tension pneumothorax and hypothermia. Again, ideally, during those circumstances, there's already a professional, medical professional on field to take over the treatment of the casualty at that time. So what we're focused on in this kit is stopping the bleeding and clearing the airway. So first thing you're gonna get to is your tourniquet. This is a cat tourniquet. One of the TCCC recommended tourniquets. It's definitely um, the primary adjunct for treating um, the leading causes of preventable deaths, which will be bleeding out. So extremity wounds, applying a tourniquet is definitely um, your go-to. So that's gonna be first coming out of the kit. Next, you're gonna have a chest seal. So any uh, penetrating trauma to, to the chest, chin to navel, you're gonna throw a chest seal on. The only thing I would say it would be nice to have two um, in the kit. Of course, there's room to throw another one should you choose to do so. But we know that if we have an entrance wound, it's possible we're gonna have an exit wound on the other side. So 
throwing two in there would, would be a good idea, but there's at least one in there. So anything what we call holes in the box, you want to cover with a chest seal. NPA is next for clearing the airway. On the other side, you have your flat compressed, just regular sterile gauze. Combat gauze, hemostatic, it's got your quick clot in it. So um, anything, any type of uh, wound that you can't control with a tourniquet, you're gonna do some type of wound packing. Obviously you're gonna need what you would like to have is quick clot or some type of gauze that's impregnated with a um, hemostatic agent that's gonna help your body's natural clotting factors. Start wound packing with that. Once you get a good wound pack, then lastly we have our compressed elastic wrap to create a good pressure dressing to keep pressure on that wound. So, like I said, everything you need to control the bleeding and clear the airway. No, there's not a decompression needle in here, but like I said, tension pneumothorax is something that's gonna develop later. And by that time, I really hope that a medical professional is on scene. There is room to throw a needle in there should you want to. So yeah, if I'm out with my family and one of my loved ones takes you know, around to the chest and I apply a seal and they end up developing tension pneumothorax, then yeah, I'm probably gonna do a needle decompression because they're not gonna sue me afterwards. Needle de decompression is usually something that has to be signed off by a doctor and I myself as a police officer, I'm not authorized to use or teach such a technique. So outside of it being one of my family members, I'm not authorized to use that technique. Again, no space blanket in here for uh, keeping you warm. No active warming or passive warming agent is in the kit. But again, that's something that we treat way later. What we're focused on, the leading causes of deaths is stopping the bleeding and clearing the airway, which this kit has everything in it to do that. So I think they did a really good job designing the kit, keeping it low profile and, and including everything that's necessary and nothing that's not. So um, good job, Grayman Training. Like I said, you guys can jump on their website, check them out. Shoot Shea Stewart an email to pick up one of his kits. If you guys like what you see, we hope you like the review. We'll see you next time.